Good evening everyone, it is Bridget here from Bridget's Healthy Kitchen wishing you a wonderful day wherever you are in the world. I hope you are well and I hope you are safe. Thank you for joining me back in the kitchen. We have a very special dish that we're going to be doing tonight and that dish is because you asked for it. Like literally, you literally asked for it. And you know what they say, ask and you shall receive. And what we're going to be doing tonight in tonight's class is we're going to be doing a very, very popular Thai style prawn and cabbage stir fry. Now this particular style of stir fry is really, really popular um, in Thailand and, and, and as far as street stalls are concerned. So if you were to go to, a, to, to, to get some food in a market or out on the street, this is one of the dishes that is very, very popular, really quick to do but packed full of flavor. So yes, we are using prawns, or for want of a better word, shrimps. <laughs> we are using prawns, um, but we're also, I'm, I'm also potentially gonna be introducing you to a few ingredients that are very popular in Thai cooking. So um, all week here in Bridget's Healthy Kitchen, we're gonna be doing Thai style food, like I said, because you asked for it. Um, so there'll be a few ingredients that I may be introducing you to that you may not be as familiar with. So we'll kind of talk about them as we're going along but are they worth getting absolutely especially if you're someone who really enjoys thai food and i know that there's a lot of you out there who really love thai food but you know one of the things that we're going to be doing tonight of course is we'll be taking making sure there's no gluten in there there is no sugar in there there is no dairy in there and there is no grain in there as well so we're doing a very healthy style stir fry uh, one of the things about stir fry that you may find is that it does tend to have quite a lot of oil so I've reduced that right back to the very bare minimum to make sure that you're getting a really really healthy but amazingly delicious dish so it's really easy to do would you like to try <laughs> yeah let's go for it all right coming down to my bench I want to show you what is in store for us today um the first thing I want to introduce you to is I said this is kind of like Imagine you're like kind of getting your Thai kitchen all sorted, especially like I said, if you really love Thai food, these are things that you're probably going to want to go and search for. So what I actually have in here is a little bit, remember we're doing prawn, so this is a seafood dish. I have in here, I know, looks a little bit weird. <laughs> this is um, dried fish, really popular in um, Asian cuisine. And um, this one I actually got from a South east asian style supermarket so they specialize in foods from like vietnam and from thailand you know sort of your quite your tropical um parts of asia and there literally are little baby fish that had been dried um naturally dry and then they just got a tiny sprinkling of salt on them that's all there is in this ingredient and this particular fish that i have is um is a little trevally would you believe so what you need to find first is firstly you need to track down your your local southeast asian Supplier, so someone who specializes in food from Thailand, Vietnam, and all those sort of countries, so that you're tropical countries, and you'll find this style of dry fish. So um, you can use mackerel. I am using, um, what am I using today? I'm using um, trevally, but you can use any of these little small fish, and we just want, like literally, that is enough. You just need a couple pieces. So this will last you forever. It only costs a couple of bucks, of course. Make sure that you store it in an airtight container and will last you literally for months and months and months. And the beauty about this is the flavor that it's going to impart. You know how we use kombu? This is kind of like that, but Thai style, right? So first thing you want to start with is you want to track yourself down some dried fish. You don't need much. Now, the, what I'm going to be showing you today is for one portion, by the way. Do I have everything plugged in? <laughs> Yay, we're ready to rock and roll. Okay, so I'm going to be working straight into my wok here. And the first thing that we want to do on a medium heat, I'm going to be adding into my little wok one teaspoon of coconut oil. So this is just for one person. Obviously, you need to double it if you're doing it for more people. But for one person, you start with just a teaspoon of coconut oil. One teaspoon, not very much at all. We're also going to add to that what I have in here, Bridget's sticky sauce. We're going to be adding in half a tablespoon of sticky sauce and I've got a lovely thick sticky sauce today it's wonderful so half a tablespoon of sticky sauce goes in there and all we're going to be doing is we're going to start once our once our um, oil melts and our sticky sauce starts to heat up we're just going to lightly saute these little guys in there so giving it a I'll turn the heat up now it's taking too long <laughs> 
a little bit impatient. But keep an eye on it because you don't want your sticky sauce to burn. So that's why I say do not start it on a medium heat. So give it a bit of a stir, as you can see. It's starting to sizzle. It's already smelling good. It's already, isn't it awesome? It's already smelling good. All right, take your little fishies, da -da -da -da, and just pop them in there. I am putting it down to medium now. And what we want to do is we just want to kind of stir fry these little fishies for a couple of minutes. Now at the moment you're probably thinking, what the heck are you doing? It will all make sense as we're going through the recipe. Just need to trust me just a little bit here. These little fishies are going to give us so much incredible flavor. And if you, if you eat a lot of Thai food, then you would already be accustomed to the fact they put a lot of dried shrimp into their cooking and they use they basically use a lot of dried seafood. So I'm going to leave those there just to kind of tick away a little bit. Show you what I have in my bowl here. So the prawns that I'm using today, or shrimps, I think if you would look at the size, these are a U26 to 30, which basically means you get 26 to 30 tails of prawns per kilo, which is two pounds. So that's how they, they categorize the, the, the size. Um, the, 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 the higher the size, so if you had like a U40, that means there's 40 prawns or shrimps per kilo. These ones are around about a 26 to 30, which is quite a common size. And um, my prawns were frozen, nothing wrong with that, and I just defrosted them. I literally left them in a, in a bowl of, um, just left them in the bowl, <laughs> on the bench, for about, oh, just as I was, I was setting up and getting ready, I just let them defrost naturally. So those are our prawns. Just looking at, I'm just taking a little gander over here. See, you see it's kind of starting to colour up. If you were here right now in my kitchen, I wish you were, I would sit you right, right there in front of you, right there. You'd be sitting there, and we'd be having a chat, might even be having a glass of red wine because you have polyphenols and everything. And the smell that is coming off this wok right now is pure heaven. It is so fabulous. Look at that. So we just want that to heat through and start to kind of get a little bit golden and a little bit crispy. So that's looking good. So those are our prawns or our shrimps. As well as that, like literally the other main ingredient here is cabbage. And, and, and just a few other bits and pieces. It's that simple to do. So, um, with the cabbage, I'm just using a plain, normal, common, everyday uh, white or green cabbage, as they're both known. And you want about 300 grams of cabbage, which is uh, about 10.5 ounces of cabbage per person. Because one of the things that, that is really important that we learn to do is we learn to limit the amount of protein we're eating, which would be, in that case, would be our, our prawns and make sure that we're having twice if not three times as much vegetables because this is what's going to keep us at our optimum health and our optimum weight is if we are making sure that we are including all these awesome awesome vegetables into our diet so you know when it comes to protein whether it be fish or tofu or, or meat you know we're having say you know uh, a portion of meat with three times as much vegetables that's a really good rule of thumb by the way so i'm cutting the cabbage just into kind of thin strips. This dish doesn't have any rice noodles or anything like that. This is literally an entire meal in a pan, which is kind of cool and it's kind of what you want. So let's have a look at our little fishies. Whoa. Oh my gosh, the color. Check out that. Do you see how it's gone really, really golden? Yes, that is exactly what we want. And at the same time, all the flavors that are coming off that, those little fishies, and also the, the sticky sauce and the coconut oil, hence why I'm doing it on medium. I don't want to burn anything. All those flavors are also going to go into our stir fry because we're going to use ex the exact same pan to cook our fishies and then to, to finish the stir fry often. So I'm just probably going to leave it there just for, just for a little bit longer. I just want it to get a little bit darker. Not too dark. Keep an eye on it. Also, a really good uh, rule, of, um, rule of thumb is when you're doing something like this, be really conscious of how things smell. If it starts to smell burnt, <laughs> turn it down, it's too hot. So just keep it, keep a bit of an eye on that as well. That's really, really gonna help you and yeah, give it a bit of a squash. We just wanna get it as crispy as possible. So remember before this, it was dry and now we are literally like frying it in sticky sauce, which is not a bad thing because can you imagine the flavor that we have now imparted on these little fishies and that is exactly what it's all about so pretty happy with that now 
I'm going to turn that block off. See, that's what we're after. I'll show you guys again so you can kind of see the colour that I have. So that's on the back. Look at all those crispy golden bits. And then as I turn it, that's a... Whoa, how good is that, right? That is pretty good. That is what you're after. A real crispy and golden colour from the fishies. All right. So, how do we get flavour out of this? You're asking. <laughs> Because there's bones in here, and I'm sure you're thinking, I want to eat no bones. But remember, bones have really high levels of calcium, which is really good for us. So the bones are good. So we are going to use the bones. And in fact, this is the best way to do it. So if you had, um, if you had like a, a mortar and pe pestle, which is like a big, you know, big um, bit of rock, and then you pound it down, you could use that if you do have one of those. But I'm just going to make it a little bit easy. And I'm going to blend these, I just chop them into little pieces, blend these in my little food processor. Where's the lid? Here we go. So what we're kind of after is this incredible flavour that we are going to add to our stir fry. And this is one of the secrets of Thai cooking is they just add the most amazing flavors and you're like, how did that suddenly taste like that? Well, this is the one of the ways that they do it, right? So I've literally just ground it up as so you could do it like in a mortar and pestle, you know, the old school way and pound it down. I can, you can do it just as quick in your little food processor. And now what we have created is we have created this little like umami loaded sprinkle that is going to go through our cabbage and our prawns. So don't bypass this step. You might be like, oh, it's too hard to find dried fish. Oh, I don't really like it. The smell coming off that is honestly insanely good. This is, this is the secret to this dish. All right, so I'm just going to leave it off to the side. It can just stay there and do its thing. I'm not going to wash this because I want to retain all those amazing flavors that we have literally just cooked into the wok, right? You don't want to waste any of that. So, I'm going to turn this back on. I'm going to um, put it, I'm going to start it off on, on, on medium and I will turn it up, start off on medium. And what we want to do is we want to go back to our little coconut oil. So we started off with one teaspoon. We're going to add just one more teaspoon, not that much at all. I think the original risk, traditional recipe for this called for like 90 mils of vegetable oil. So we've only added two teaspoons um, of um, coconut oil, so, which is really, really good. But we're going to go back to our, our, our lovely sticky sauce, which is sitting here waiting for me. And we're going to add another half tablespoon, which takes us up to a total of one tablespoon of our sticky sauce. So lots of flavours already we are imparting on this wonderful dish. So that's in there. You probably wondered when I'd start adding ginger and garlic. Now is the time. Because we're literally ready to stir fry. So I am adding half a tablespoon of ginger. We are also going to add one tablespoon of garlic. If you're not that keen on garlic, just go half, but I love garlic, so good for us. So I've added a tablespoon of garlic. And now we just want to give this a bit of time to do some work. A little bit of a stir fry. Do I have a one spoon some There we do. Yep. Alright, here we go. Bit of a stir fry. I'm doing it on, on medium heat. I don't want the garlic to burn. I don't want the ginger to burn. And because my wok is quite small, I'm actually going to be working in just like, I'm literally only going to do, a, do one portion in this wok for you guys tonight. But if you are doing this for more than one, or you want to make this and then, you know, either freeze it down or sit it in the fridge as meal prep, then all you need to do is literally just double the quantities. But even if you are doubling the quantities, remember not to overfill your wok. The secret of good wok cooking is to have lots of surface area so things cook really, really evenly. So about 30 seconds to a minute of stir frying those two ingredients. Let's now add in our prawns. You're after about 125 grams of prawns per person, which is around about 4.2 ounces, just over 4 ounces of prawns or shrimp. Keep on stir frying. I'm going to turn the heat up. I'm going to go for it. Oh, get nervous. This is the time where you don't move, right? Don't walk away. You know, you can't go check your phone now. You've got to stay present. Keep on stir frying. That's what, what cooking is all about. 
give it a bit of a toss if you're feeling, you know, feeling enthusiastic about it. You can do that as well. You want to have these prawns in here, not too long, maybe for about, you know, 30 to 60 seconds. I'm going to let them do their thing. And now we're going to add in the cabbage. Straight in. I know it seems like a lot per person. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Actually, I think I've got more than 300 grams here. I've got about 400. But just remember, this is going to wilt down as well. It doesn't stay all big like this. It is actually going to, whoop, we lost some cabbage on the floor. It is going to start to break down. So keep on moving it around. Use your tongs to kind of make sure that you're getting as much work as possible. I'm now turning it up. So now I'm doing things on medium to high. You want it to be quite hot now. Keep on stir frying a couple of seconds. Gonna go higher again. Woo Throwing caution to the wind. So yeah, you wanna kind of do this part on medium high to high. Now I say medium high to high because I don't know how hot your cooktop can get. Mine can get pretty hot. So I'm kind of going medium high, but you may have to go right on full bore, depending on how hot your cooktop gets. Okay, that is looking fabulous. Thank you very much. The next thing we're going to add is this little sauce here. I know it's backwards, but it actually says fish sauce. So fish sauce is um, what is commonly used in Asian cuisine to add a saltiness. Um, I'm using actually a coconut amino-based fish sauce. So there's no fish were harmed in the making of this. I just find it to be, it still smell, smells like fish sauce, but it's a lot more of a natural product. Some of the fish sauce on the market can be pretty artificial. This is such a good um, company. They're called New Life. Can you see down the bottom there? N-I-U Life, New Life, wonderful. I'm gonna, you can add one to two tablespoons of fish sauce, depending on, if you're using this, probably two teaspoons, sorry, not tablespoons, teaspoons. If you're using like, you know, old school fish sauce, then go gently, just add one. All right, stir fry. Fry. Toss, steep and toss now as the cabbage begins to wilt down, which is wonderful. Mahi, could you grab me some herbs from the garden? I forgot. Just grab me a handful of whatever it might you love, whatever you think looks amazing. Thank you. All right, so that is looking good. The next thing we're going to do is where's my water bottle? I was about to pour wine into it. That's not a good idea. A couple of tablespoons of water goes in there. That is going to create the sauce for us. I'm tossing and right already can you guys see we've started to create a little bit of a sauce down there which is perfect and we're pretty much done the only thing left to do is to take back that I'm turning it off now take back that wonderful dry fish that we cooked and add a couple of tablespoons of that goes in sprinkle it on it's going to add so much incredible flavor I'm also going to add a little bit of pepper if you wanted to add chili, now would be the time to add a little bit of chili, a little bit of salt. Okay, let's have a look at what Mahi grabbed us. So he grabbed us rosemary. We probably won't use the rosemary this time, my darling. <laughs> but really, really good, good thought though. We could use that for another time. We'll use that another time. But he did grab me some basil. So um, there is a wonderful Thai basil that you could have that could that I've actually got in the garden. <laughs> but but we're going to use that basil. So thank you. That was a very that was a very good grab of herbs very quickly. So um, the other way you could add flavor. Something else I want to introduce you guys to. This you, you don't have to if you don't want to. Once again, but if you love Thai food, it might be something that you want to look at purchasing because it lasts forever. So what I have in this little jar here is I have dried shrimps, packed full of flavor. They're literally just little tiny. Look at them. They're so little and tiny but just a tablespoon of dried shrimps sprinkled over top of this amazing stir fry is going to absolutely transform the flavor. So you can buy that once again from your Southeast Asian style, or what most Asian um, supermarkets have little baby dried shrimps and they literally, you store them in an airtight jar, they will last for you know, six months, they're incredible. So those have gone on in there. Give that a little bit of a toss. And then the last thing that we're gonna be adding to this it's just a handful of fresh bean sprouts. They can go on. And now this kind of looks like, like meal for two. <laughs> it's huge. 
There's still quite a lot of food in there, isn't it? I'm gonna add more than one. I just yep, add it all, add it all. All right. That's actually quite a lot. <laughs> okay, this is for like one and a half. I don't think this will quite feed me and my hay. There's definitely not enough prawns, but this is quite a big, decent meal. And all you've got to do is think about plating up. And you know, there's so much goodness in this dish. There is so much goodness. And already the smell that is just attacking my nostrils is quite phenomenal. So let's put those prawns on top there. Like if I'm really hungry, that's probably me. I could get through all of that. So that's just a little bit more than one portion. The ingredients, oh, I did have more cabbage. That's what it was. I didn't weigh the cabbage right. So that is just going to go there for now. Because I'd like to show you how I like to finish it off with a few fresh herbs. So you could use basil. You could use, um, definitely use coriander. You could even use mint. You could use like, you know, Vietnamese mint or Thai basil as well would work really well on this. Um, and the other thing that you could use is chives. Probably I would stay away from that, uh, from rosemary or thyme or any of the real sort of heavy herbs. And you want to go for something that's quite light and quite luscious. So there you have this absolutely fabulous, remember street style um, stir fry with prawns and cabbage. And those gorgeous little fishies, they are so sensational. And what you essentially have is just the most fabulous little meal that you can whip up in about 10 minutes. And when it comes to stir fries, you want to make sure it's pretty easy. This is pretty easy. The hardest thing is definitely going to be tracking down where you can purchase, you know, your dried fish from. So just sort of take a look at this. So I want to show you guys once again what it looks like so you can have a little track down in your supermarket that's what it looks like like that, that's all it is dried fish yeah and you only need about that much for one person dried fish and also of course if you want to add a little bit more of mummy then you're going to be wanting to look at something like dried shrimps too very popular this wonderful prawn and cabbage stir fry i hope you try it out i'll be sharing the recipe with you tomorrow on Bridget's Healthy Kitchen so you can request the recipe and print it off and keep it so that you can make this gorgeous store stir fry anytime you need to. So keep an eye out for that. In the meantime, I hope you have a wonderful evening tonight. I hope you have a wonderful day for stay time wherever you are. And um, please stay safe and please stay well. And we'll see you in a couple days time. The next class we're doing here in the kitchen our Thai week, our celebration of beautiful, gorgeous, so well balanced Thai cuisine. The next uh, recipe we're going to be doing is an amazing green papaya salad, which is just perfect. So well balanced. I can't wait to share that with you, but enjoy this. It is an absolute treat. So thank you for joining me tonight. I look forward to seeing you back here again in Bridget's Healthy Kitchen. Take care. Bye.